talk about something a little taboo in the world of gaming, and that's the console war. Now, I'm fine with it personally because in the purest sense, it's simply the competition between consoles and the AAA genre defining space. Now, the term has been misunderstood and repurposed into something it's not. And that's another way to describe fanboyism. Now, the contortion of these two is the topic today as we examine fanboy reactions to a console war decision. Microsoft is clearly deciding to exit the former and become hardware agnostic. However, in lieu of a recent Fire TV Xbox ad, fanboys are mad at Microsoft's new approach to hardware. They feel it hampers the competitive space and quality of the console market. Now, do they have a point or do these fanboys just need to call it quits on social media and go take a chill pill somewhere? We tackle all this on the next installment of The Spill, our gaming hot topic video series. Let's get right into it. What's up, people? What's up, people? What is up, people? It is your boy, MM2K of Geeks, Cloud Dosage, Hard Knock Digital Culture. And here, MM2K Gaming, back again with another episode of The Spill. This is where we talk about the latest and greatest in video game news and the hot topic, hot button issue of the day. And boy, oh boy, oh boy, do we have a great one for you today. This one is called Xbox Fanboys Fall Apart Over Fire TV Ad. But before we get into all this, do us a huge favor, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and rock those bells for notifications, please, so you know when we're dropping these doses. All right, let's get ready. Let's get set. Let's go. So before we get too deep into this, we, we got to talk about a few things, right? First, we got to talk about why this is even a story, how this even came about. Then I'm going to try to explain to these fanboys and not just fanboys, there are legitimate uh, Xbox enthusiasts, as you'll see that, I, that I've been going back and forth with one a dear friend of mine. Um, you know, in regards to look, man, you guys got to understand what's going on here. You, 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 you got to stop sipping the Kool-Aid or you got to stop having this optimism because even though I may agree with you and you, you know, we know what works best for them. They are clearly on a different path. They do not care what we think in regards to this matter. They're doing something different. All right. Well, let's go to the communication that really started it all here. All right. And in order for me to do that, I got to show you this. Okay. So this is me responding to a tweet from Kid Smooth, the infamous Kid Smooth, the, the best bot as he calls himself, the, the maker of the hit, <laughs> the Billboard 100 hit, Game Pass, Game Pass. Yeah, that, that, that Kid Smooth. <laughs> Shout out to Kid Smooth. I got a problem with Smooth. All right. So here's what he said. He says, Dear Xbox, your marketing sucks. How hard can it be to say now playable on Amazon Fire TV? Why do you remind potential buyers of an Xbox not to buy an Xbox, right? And I saw that and I was like, what? What? what, 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 what where's the confusion? Why is there even confusion on this? So. I responded to Kid Smooth and I said the following. I said, marketing? Bro, the console approach is over for them. Did you not see the screenshots of GFN being used as a way to play third party games? They offer too. It's all about putting their game slash services everywhere that will allow it. Proprietary hardware no longer plays a unique role. That's just the way that it is. And there's just this misconception that no, Xbox is still going to fight to have a box. They're using terminology like launch exclusive, right? So they know exclusives matter. <sighs> this is so far away from the truth. And, and again, I'm not trying to pat myself on the back. Like I, I'm the all seeing eye. I've been doing this talking to y'all that is for seven going on eight years man we gotta get a better business acumen there were just certain things you don't do if 
you are trying to be competitive in a particular space. If you're trying to convert from a particular space, but your current clientele, you can't afford to dump off just yet. So you gotta, you know, edge them along. Then you start doing the things that you see Microsoft doing. Microsoft is becoming hardware agnostic. They do not care to sell you a console. All they want to do is make sure that in a cheap, functional way, you can access Game Pass, you can access their games somewhere a la carte, and you can likely play free to play games that will continue to support them so they can get that third party revenue from that. Outside of that, they don't care. They don't care, right? Um, and people still think that Xbox looks at third party native support for a console and they're like why would they want to give that up and that does make a whole bunch of sense why would they want to give that up they make a lot of money off of third party activity but what third party activity do they make a lot of money off of do they make a lot of money off of dragon's dogma and all that no the saving grace for xbox and I'm not saying they don't make money off these third-party deals, but really the kit and caboodle was the free-to-play games, particularly Fortnite. Whatever games land on the top 10 are the same games that are in the top 10 over in PlayStation. Those are the ones laying the foundation third-party support-wise. It's mainly free-to-play games. So if we can maintain the free-to-play support, which they'll likely do, you know what I'm saying? They already got Fortnite running in the cloud. Plus, these games are also in the Windows Store. So as far as native console support, they don't need that. They're talking about approaching it from a two-tier process, a handheld and a stream box. So all they got to basically do is just stream your activity from their Windows Store as far as third-party support is concerned. Apex Legends, I believe, is there. All these third-party free-to-play games are available through the Windows Store. So they, only, they don't need to support it natively. Now, you would prefer it to be supported natively for a variety of reasons. But it's not reasons that's going to make or move uh, Xbox at all or Microsoft, really. They'll just make you stream the PC version. A lot of these free-to-play games, the entitlements are switchable between Xbox and PC. Anyway, there you go. Why do you think Sarah Bond is looking at ways to, uh, you know, what, what did she say? They're, they're, they got an exploratory committee to look and see how they can get you to play games from other consoles on their new setup that's simply backwards compatibility right so why is there got to be exploratory community why is there this all this hoop law about backwards compatibility unless in the traditional console sense you're abandoning that and if you are and once that becomes public people are going to be concerned like well hold on if you're not supporting native console activity, how are you gonna support all my old purchases? And that's what the exploratory committee is for. Because especially if you're doing this through streaming, where are these games going to be housed? What about the physical copies of games? All this stuff brings up a big challenge for Xbox that they're gonna to have to answer to, and they're gonna to have to find a solution to, but it's worth them moving in this way because they can't sell consoles in that hardware sense. They are losing catastrophically in that market. The NPDs just dropped um, at the time of this recording, and that's going to be another video, so stay tuned for that. And the activity still looks bad, right? PlayStation is just a dominant marketplace that when you attach the need a major component of accessing that marketplace is via the console. When you gatekeep like that, the console is just, oh my gosh, it's going to sell, it's going to fly off the shelves. Xbox doesn't have that compelling content to echo those same sentiments with the consumers. 
So, yeah, even though this is going to be a pain in their rear end to try to find out what they're going to do about your previous hardware titles, they're going to explore it. Because in the long run, it's better to do the things that we're about to outline that they're going to do, right? But again, just to reiterate, if you think that Xbox still cares about the console market and particularly about native third party gaming, you are not looking at this from 5,000 feet and you need to. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about this confusion and what the new Xbox is going to look like. And in order to do that, I want to take you to um, my tweet. Right. And I want to take you to responses within my tweet. So let's do this. So shout out to my homie Winter Soldier. He, he probably knew he was going to be in the videos. <laughs> shout out to Will Sink, formerly of Xbox Uncut. Really the podcast of all podcasts that really supported me and brought me here and then helped me, you know, transition into Scram Punks and PNTS Network and then, you know, um, to work with Z and Broadband Bullies and all that great stuff. They're, they're, they're at the forefront. They supported me even though they laughed at the name Scram Punks and they said, that sounds like some cereal. <laughs> But shout out to Xbox Uncut, even though I'm no longer a big Xbox enthusiast. Um, those guys were fantastic. I love them. Um, Tim Dog used to be on there as well on from time to time. Shout out to Tim Dog and shout out to Chris Stills. Shout out to Stefan and, and everybody that was part of Xbox Uncut. You guys were, were the greatest. Um, that being said, me and Wolf Sinks have been, you know, friendly in, in a friendly fashion debating this back and forth i love conversating with will sinks and I, and I actually would love to get him on a podcast to talk about this if he's ever free um so he's 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 he's, he's kind of like hesitant to to accept what i'm saying here he's like hold on mm let, let, let me go back a little bit um he starts off with hey you know s spreading out and still having less appeal isn't great console isn't where they're putting all their chips in but i'd argue they still have to make sure that the core areas are strong enough to get wider support from third party to help their broader strategy i agree with that like i think it's best for xbox to go the third party route uh, look, look to you get so much money. sony is showing you this you get so much money when you have massive third party support in order to have massive third party support People, developers got to feel like that they're porting their games to a platform that has some type of stability and, 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 and some type of um, financial reward for them in order to do so. You create that financial reward, though, when you make your, your console stick out with quality content. And unfortunately, Microsoft doesn't have the latter. So their consoles have been declining, declining, declining. We, we talked about the aforementioned NPD report where they're now tracking, what is it, 8% less than the Xbox One in that. We all are in agreement that the Xbox One generation was a disaster. They're tracking less than, a, than the disaster. They're actually tracking less than the Xbox 360 who went on, came off to a very slow start, very slow. That's not good. We've heard from other sources and publications that developers are questioning their support of Xbox. And we're now seeing um, a lot of indie developers really start that push up. We're not supporting the console natively anymore. There's just no point. And because of that, Xbox is looking at that and they're like, well, look, we have a strategy of con. And this, and this is where I think people are, are, are kind of like, they're, I don't want to say denial, but acceptance is is getting hard for them the acceptance that xbox is recluse to us putting out the quality content that sells a console is not our business anymore like if we make something quality we're putting it everywhere if we don't make something quality okay i mean it, hopefully it'll be good enough to bolster game pass that's their strategy it's a quantitative strategy we don't know if it's going to work but it's something that they're trying it's a quantitative strategy now when you realize that then you come to understand that hey 
my full fledged Xbox support is only going to land me mediocrity when it comes to their titles for the most part. There might be a few gems here and there, but it's going to land me mediocrity. And if I'm a console gamer, I can just forget it because I'm not going to get native support for these third party games. The Marvel versus Capcom games and all these other remakes and stuff like that, these indie games that, that are coming elsewhere, they're not going to come here because the developers are like, why bother? And in order for me to accept that realism, I got to accept that Microsoft is settling on mediocrity. Because if Microsoft wasn't settling on mediocrity, they would continue this fight. They would say, look, it's taking us some time, but we are really aiming to bring out blockbuster games that are going to bring the, the boys to the milk, you know, bring the milkshakes to the yard or however it goes. You know, I know I butchered that. And they know that's not their goal. Matt Booty has spoken to it. You know, we want to, we want to, you know, put a lot of double A content with a triple A polish, right? That's not going to do it. Microsoft is on a totally different track and in, 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 in the qualitative aspect of their games are totally different from what you would need if you wanted to really compete in the console market. So now they're just going to provide hardware. And, I, and, and I'm explaining this to, to Will and he's like, he, he doesn't want to accept because he's a big time Xbox fan. He doesn't want to accept that mediocrity is their way forward. So I point out to him, I said, look, man, they're abandoning console third party sales because the, the, the bulk of their third party, uh, th what makes it lucrative for them is, is coming from the free to play games. And they can support that through Game Pass and through xCloud. They can still support free to play games. Um, they're abandoning three part, third party native sales for the most part. Look no further than GFN on Xbox screens recently released. Now, if you're not familiar with this, this is a rumored uh, um, leak from somebody. I get I don't know if some AB testing is going on, but someone went and pulled up Street Fighter Six on Xbox, and then there was a box here. If you trans, if it, when it was translated, it said you can play this on GeForce Now as well. Now, I originally just thought that that was just Xbox being friendly with GeForce Now because Street Fighter Six must be on Game Pass, and you know you can play your Game Pass games on GeForce Now. No, Street Fighter Six isn't even on Game Pass at the time that this AB, you know, possible AB testing is happening. So they're now sending you through with this. When this goes live, at the time that this goes live, from what we know, they are sending you to an alternative store, an alternative marketplace that's not attached to theirs altogether. Because if you want to play Street Fighter VI on GeForce Now, you get it from the Steam store and you play it on GeForce Now. That has nothing to do with Xbox but it supports the narrative that Xbox is opening their hardware up to everybody. So whether it's available on Game Pass or xCloud, period, we want you to be able to play it. So if, even if it's not supported by us via the cloud, if it's not supported via Game Pass, we're going to hook you up with somebody where you can get the game from. That way on any device that you have, any device that you have where xbox is supported we're trying to create this environment where whether we give you the game or not you'll still be able to play it through somebody that is foregoing the majority the bulk of third party console activity will has he's continuing to question you know you know how this will work i'm explaining to him that they're doing something similar to what google did even when stadia was around when, when google opened up um you know opened up the google uh search engine to other cloud platforms microsoft is doing the same thing with their box right and i had to remind him look street fighter 6 isn't on game pass are you seeing what i'm saying and he references you know rightfully so he references hey look you know all the core games are coming to xbox you know, and, and, and I let him know that this is not a foregone conclusion that the a la carte option is going to, you know, 
is, is, is bringing all the games all at once. From what I'm hearing, that it doesn't sound like that. It sounds like that it's going to be a rollout, like games are going to come in bundles. And you may have a scenario where Street Fighter VI may not be included to that bundle until 2025 or something like that. With that being said, it still brings up the point that, hey, you can play this game either with even if they do allow a la carte options you can play this game with us or you can go to a completely different marketplace and play it via geforce now and it's and, and, and it sounds like they're trying to standardize their ui because this is probably going to be how the ui works on their rumored stream box in their handheld because Phil Spencer has said, and, 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 and a lot of people are saying, this is something that they're actually pursuing. They are opening the next set of hardware to where you'll be able to play Steam, Epic. You know, everything is going to be available through there. And you, hell, you might even play Amazon Luna on there because now they're on Fire TVs. The Xbox app is now on Fire TV. So they probably struck a deal with Amazon and Amazon probably said, well, hell, if you're going to put Luna access on your Xbox, then that'll be awesome too. And GeForce Now could be the first one that they're testing out through AB testing. You know what I'm saying? And finally to cement, you know, the acceptance quadrant here. I said, Will says, yeah, they, they they have to make an agreement with publishers and such. I get the strategy and why it would benefit them, but they would have to take careful steps to not bury their hardware. Their partners still value the option hardware and sales until this off other stuff pans out. And I totally agree. I said, yes, you and I agree. I think Xbox is silently indicating though, they no longer care about native 3P support outside of free-to-play titles. And these, this is the example that I lay out. Xbox hardware legacy and new will support variety of stores to supplement 3P games for gamers. And Xbox will simply deliver Xbox games free-to-play and Game Pass. <laughs> and he's still, he's like, I'm not buying it, MM. That's hella wild to me, bro, laugh out loud. You know, shout out to, shout out to my brother, Will Six. I love conversating with him. Like I said, I would love to have a live conversation with him. But, and the reason why I put that out there is I wasn't putting him on blast. I, I really think that that conversation really cements the stages that a lot of Xbox enthusiasts, not just fanboys. You know, um, I, I use the word fanboy to roll in this video because a fanboy's reaction to this is what prompted me to even work on this. But Will is not a fanboy. He, he will be very critical of Xbox. He is an enthusiast. But I think that, it, you know, it was for me too. I, I think he's coming to grips with the fact that Xbox doesn't want to apply the best. They don't want to, you know, do the best of the best anymore. They're going for a completely uh, quantitative approach, right? So in closing, here's what I have to say. Xbox is clearly, all right, Xbox is clearly becoming hardware agnostic. They are deleting their weak points and focusing on their strengths. It is clear due to the rejuvenated success of Sea of Thieves and Grounded on PlayStation, they have a bright third party future. Like I, nothing's gonna happen to Microsoft Gaming. What they've not been good at is exclusive content and competing with an ecosystem they tried and it's not their strong suit for the current personnel that they have they don't value that approach enough to reorganize get rid of phil get other people in like people have been proclaiming to fit the status quo structure microsoft clearly wants to do something different the question is will it works will it work who knows but console gamers i think it's time to reevaluate your choice if you're so leaning is on the Xbox ecosystem or platform. Because truth be told, Xbox is no longer leaning on you. And that's it from your boy. Let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. Cause like I always say, who cares what I think? But if you did like what I had to say, check out the links below to follow me. They will lead you to geeks. Cloud dosage or non digital culture. And yes, here, MM2K Gaming. With all that said, peace. Have a wonderful, wonderful gaming day.